Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Think Training tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about last week's solution, the way I went about solving it. I'm going to present you guys with a new solution for this week to solve, and I'm going to sign you guys off with a think tip, just like I did in the last video. All right, now before I talk about how I did this uh, solution, I want to remind you guys that the way I do things isn't always the the best way or the right way necessarily. Um, I do try to give you guys the best solution that I can think of, but just know that whenever you guys are solving these and you're looking at the, the way I solve them and you know comparing your solutions with mine, uh, try not to think that you've done it wrong if you didn't do it just like I did because uh, with coding there's just so many different ways to do things um, and it's senseless to think that if you didn't do it my way then you did it wrong okay so stay original with your code um, stay confident with your solutions now also realize that if you've if you've done something that maybe isn't optimal then you should definitely look in um, into ways to optimize your code okay so let's talk about how I went about solving this the two main things that I saw with this problem was clicking and targeting and that sort of screams physics raycast to me because raycasting will allow me to click on objects in my scene and return important information about those game objects okay and then when it comes to clicking on terrain I'll be able to use a physics raycast to click on my terrain and I'll be able to return the the point at which the raycast hit my terrain so I'm going to actually be able to get the point that was clicked on um, and so that's going to be a really useful uh, really useful tool for actually moving our, our target to that position on our terrain. Okay, and again, there are no obstacles for my target to move around, so I don't need to worry about any pathfinding algorithms. Let's go ahead and take a look at my project to see sort of how it looks. I can click around. My little guy doesn't move anywhere. Once I click him, though, he becomes targeted. Now, anywhere that I click, he'll actually move to. Okay, so if, you're, if your uh, project doesn't look like this, don't worry, I've done some extra things that weren't required in the solution. I added this green texture underneath the player. If you guys want to know how to do something like that, it's definitely a good thing to know how to do. Um, leave comments in the comment section below if you want to request that, and I'll, I'll probably do a video on that anyway. Um, but that's definitely a good thing to know how to do. But again, it wasn't required, so don't worry if you don't have anything like that. Okay, so we've seen the way mine looks. Now let's talk about how I sort of did it. I'm not going to be giving you guys detailed code examples. I will be showing you guys my code um, and only the highlighted points because the purpose of these tutorials isn't to show you how to code, it's just to give you an idea of how to solve problems. Okay, so I have these two scripts target selector and target manager. My target selector is responsible for getting the target. My target manager is responsible for actually moving that guy around. So let's take a look at our target selector here. Now the main point that you guys need to worry about is this get targets method. And don't worry about anything from remove projectors and the lines below that because that is relating to the, the green texture that you saw underneath my player. Alright, so don't worry about that. Instead worry about select target this line of code on up. Uh, worry about this chunk of code here. What I do is I say if select input is greater than zero, so this is just saying if I clicked, um, then I'm going to create a, a ray cast. And the way I do that is I say screen point to ray, input mouse position. So this is going to take a ray relative to my mouse position on the screen and shoot that guy out into world space. What I do is I say if physics ray cast, ray out hit 100 target layer. So what does all of this mean? What are, what are these parameters? Take a look at Unity's API for physics ray cast. You'll get more insight onto what this stuff means. Um, but basically the ray is going to be the, the actual ray that I'm shooting into the world. Out hit is going to be the, the hit information of the object that the ray cast hit. 100 is the distance of my ray cast. Target layer is the object that I'm looking to hit. So I can actually narrow it down by layers to determine um, what objects, what, what layer am I looking to hit objects on. Okay, so if I hit a target on my target layer, I'm going to say select target. Um, and what this does is it's, it triggers an event. So I create this event up here. This is my select target event. So what this does is it flags an event. My target manager is going to respond to that event right here. So select target. That's where it responds to the event. Okay. Again, this is my target manager. What I do here is I set my target and I set my target position. Okay. So once I have a target, let's go up to my update method here. If I have a target, I'm going to check for a new position. 
So let's look at check for new position. What I do is my second raycast. And my second raycast does exactly what my last raycast did, only it's not looking for a target layer, it's looking for the ground layer. So if I hit anything on my ground layer, what I have the ability to do is out hit the point and put that point into my next position. So the point at which the raycast hit the ground is going to be my next position, which is exactly what we wanted. Once I have next position, I can actually move to the target point, pass next position to it. And what I do with next position is I lerp my target's position to that point. Okay, so here's my next position called point, and I'm lerping my target position to that point. Now I'm only modifying the x and the z uh, vector because I don't want to move my target on the y-axis. If I do that it's going to continue trying to move into the ground because the hit point is going to return the point that's actually on the ground or in the ground. So I only modify the x and z values of the lerp. Okay, and that's sort of how I did it guys. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, again, I skipped around a lot but I showed you the main point so I'm going to be using a physics raycast to uh, get my target. I'm going to be using a physics raycast to get the point that I hit on the ground so I can actually move my target to that point. So that was my solution guys. If you have any questions about how I did that um, or I guess not really about how I did that but how, how you guys did it. I want to know how you guys did it. Uh, send us emails, send us comments in, this, in the comment section below. If you guys have any questions about how you guys did it or if you guys have a better way uh, of doing it, go ahead and let everybody know about that. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that stuff in the comments section. Let's talk about uh, this week's problem. So here's this week's problem. I have a cursor on my screen that I can move with my mouse. I want to be able to shoot projectiles in the direction my crosshairs are facing with relation to the position of my weapon. And we're going to assume the weapon is always in the center of the screen, okay? So you guys, think about that one. Uh, write some pseudocode. Look up Unity's API for hints on how to solve it. Again, I want to reinforce the idea of not going to forums to see how other people did it. Go ahead and think about this one on your own for a little while. Here is this week's Think Tip. Verbs will reveal some of the methods you will need in your solution. So what I mean by that is when I give you guys the problem statements, and you guys should do this whenever you're actually creating your own projects, you know, write out what you want to happen. And when you do that, look at the verbs of what you wrote or what I have given you, and that will give you hints to the types of methods that you'll be needing to solve the solution. All right, so that's going to be this week's Think Tip. I want to go ahead and sign you guys off with that. If you like the video, drop a like. If you're liking the channel, go ahead and subscribe to us. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.